Hey everybody, <clears throat> what's up? So just a heads up, um, if you're watching on Instagram, I can only pay attention to one chat. So while I'm checking in now and saying hello, if you want to participate in the full chat, head over to youtube.com slash sketchaday.com. That's where I'll be. All right. I'll go live on YouTube here. I guess I'm already live. Hello. <laughs> Thought I was playing the bumper YouTubers. <clears throat> Anyhow, welcome to Sketch a Day Live. I'm back. What a day yesterday. That was crazy. Um, I'm going to switch over to my laptop and show you uh, a bit of the carnage here <clears throat> and what happened. So pretty crazy though. Um, pretty crazy day. There was a house in my neighborhood yesterday that caught on fire. And uh, while I was streaming, my kids were like, Dad, there's an emergency. So I was like, I'm just showing this on YouTube, guys. Um, <laughs> but they were like, Dad, <clears throat> there's an emergency. And so I was thinking, you know, they got into a fight or something or, um, you know, some, something of that nature or whatever. Um, but yeah, they they saw this the smoke coming up, <clears throat> and uh, it was insane. <laughs> so I look outside; the house is completely on fire, completely on fire. I'm like, oh my gosh! the The reason I actually ran, or one of the reasons I left, is the fire looked like it was coming from my sister's house. My sister lives in my neighborhood, and so I was like, oh shit. I gotta go check on her, so I went. She was standing in the street. It was actually a house that was kind of behind her house. There were explosions, so if if the fire kept going, her house would have been taken, completely taken. So I'm glad I went over. I'm glad she was okay. She was shaken up. Um, the homeowners in that fire lost pets. I'll switch over here. So this is, uh, actually, there we go. This is what was left of that house and garage. Okay, so pretty intense, pretty insane day. Um, so yeah, they lost their pets. The homeowner was okay. Um, just as a side note, one of the homeowners was asleep inside. And so the neighbor, I don't know how he knew or what, but he broke the glass, ran inside the house, woke the dude up, threw the fire in the flames, and smoke. <laughs> Got him out of the house because he was in the basement. And so he lived. Pretty crazy. Um, anyhow, so if you missed that, it's on my Instagram. I'm going to switch back to drawing here. I was just warming up as I was showing you guys that stuff, but... That's why I ended the stream early yesterday. <laughs> In case you're wondering, like, where did he go? I just had to leave. So anyhow, back at our early morning, at least for me, early-ish, mid-morning time. I know I, I kind of did a few later streams lately. I'm going to continue with what we were doing yesterday. Maybe do a little bit of a redo. I don't know if Tom's here or not, but he had asked... If I could do reflections on, or not reflections, but how to shade shiny organic surfaces, which by necessity could have reflections. So there's that. Anyhow, just a quick warm up. If it's your first time, welcome. Hello. I like to draw and talk, answer questions. So if you have questions about life, the universe, dating, any of that stuff hit me up. We also have Roshan joining. So if you have real questions about design, you can ask him. He knows it all. 
Yeah, I'm gonna continue with the spaceship and uh, reflective surfaces, maybe do a robot and a bunker, something like that. So, apologies yesterday, having to run last minute, but she was pretty shaken up, my sister, and so we just hung out, her and her little puppers. But yeah, there were explosions, man, it was crazy. Uh, for a second, we thought they were going to evacuate the neighborhood. Because I live right next to some mountains, and there's a lot of uh, trees and old growth. So if the trees catch fire, then, you know, we have to just go. So, pretty crazy though. I never, you know, it's funny... Sometimes in life things happen and you don't anticipate them happening, but when they happen, you go, oh, okay. Shit's real now. <clears throat> Could have died. All right, let's start with a quick ship of some sort. Maybe I'll do a couple views. Just do this scribble style. Just a couple here. Nice and fast, loose. And how about we do another view or another concept here? So we'll just kind of fill up this page with a few a few different ideas, all right? You know, gray marker style, that kind of thing. Anyhow, hopefully uh, today won't be as eventful as yesterday was. Oh, I should say as well, hello Latrice. Hello Svetlana, or patrons. I've had a lot of people reach out about tutoring lately, so thank you. Um, I was working on an additional informative document there, so if you're interested, I am ready for you. More ready for you now. Um, so thank you for being curious and supportive. Kind of keep these loose. Yeah, I figured I would, because yesterday things just ended so abruptly. Plus, I wasn't super happy with the ship I did, so I thought I would just kind of do a couple more. Just do a couple more things here. <clears throat> Yeah, thanks for joining, guys. And like I said, hit me up with any questions you might have. Happy to answer to the best of my ability. I like questions. I like conversation.
Just a quick tip here when you're sketching, if you hold your pen, I know I say this all the time, um, at least it feels like I say it all the time, but I also feel like there's some new people watching today. Maybe just a, just a hunch, a feeling. But if you hold your pen just a little bit further up the barrel, it's going to give you a bit more flexibility. Um, well, not even flexibility, but it's just going to help your sketches feel a little looser. You're not going to be holding on to things for dear life. There's no way this thing would fly, by the way. <laughs> well, I shouldn't say that. Maybe it has, like, some sort of hover technology of some sort. I don't know. I watched uh, Godzilla King of the Monsters last night with, with my boys. That was fun. We do movie nights on Mondays. That's what we do. And then sometimes we'll do board game night on Tuesdays. That's probably what we'll do today. Roaring Crook says, I want to die. Please don't die. <laughs> Please don't. I hope that's not a serious thing you're saying. If it is, and you need a friend, I'm happy to be your friend for now. So I'm just using a paper made flare pen, you know, keeping it loose, and then we can uh, add lines and details where we need to. Use some rivets here. I guess this is more of a, maybe a human, human made ship after we discovered some alien technology or something. Maybe something like that. Do you ever tell yourself stories while you're sketching or is it just me? Curious. I made this weird tea this morning, by the way. It smells so bad. It's Lapsang Gochang or something, I don't remember. My friend gave it to me a while back, so I thought I'd try a new morning beverage. It smells pretty gross. It tastes like the earth. So I added some lemon juice, hoping to do something about it. Ah, let's see. Checking in on the chat. What artists have inspired me? Um, Scott Robertson for sure. Um, Daniel Simon, I met him once. I don't particularly like him though. <laughs> he was he was just so dismissive when I was like, "Hey man, big fan of your work." He was just like feeling himself at the time, probably because he was working on the Captain America movies. He like really made it. Um, so yeah, Daniel Simon, Doug Chang, Ian McHugh. Jake Parker. I guess they're more illustrators. Those are a few people that that inspire me. There's a dude, I forgot his name, um, but his Instagram handle is Robot Pencil. Also super talented. Black creator. There's a there's a few black creators I follow as well. Marco Nelor. An illustrator. Um, as far as like design sketching, Sangwang Seok. I don't know how to say his name. Maybe I should like do a blog post and it's like, here are 10 people I like. <laughs> and then you guys could, you know, follow them or whatever. Hello, Roshan. <laughs> he said he's better than these apps around that calm your mind. Well, thank you. 
Lone Star, you must be on the East Coast. If it's lunchtime for you. I'm guessing you're on the East Coast, yeah? Roshan is safely tucked away in Europe, away from this mess in the USA. COVID mess. What a time to be alive, people. Don't worry, I'm not going to get political. I'm just saying, what a time to be alive. People get sensitive about this stuff, you know. Very sensitive, which I get. I understand it. Sometimes with sketching, you just kind of have to go with the flow. Sometimes you find connections between lines, whatever, and you just like make it happen. It's making a sec second wave there. Wow. Yeah, let me share. Uh, let me share robot pencil with you, just because that's easy to remember. Um, This works. All right, there we go. And I will share this with you. What's up, Tom? There you are. So yeah, check out that dude, Robot Pencil. Super awesome. One thing I want to get better at perpetually is drawing people. I think I've told myself this story in my head that I'm not good at it, but that's not true. I just haven't uh, gotten to the point where I feel like sharing <laughs> or even doing it live, but I'm working on it. Well, I'm glad you joined Tom because we're going to continue. You missed the beginning though where I showed that house that was on fire, but we're going to continue with your request from yesterday. Tom is one of our patrons. I try to show love to the patrons for supporting. Much appreciated, as always. Maybe there's some text on this one. Some arrow or something. Sometimes sketching with a simple tool is kind of nice, not having to worry about marker and all that stuff. You can do a, you can do a lot with lines, you know. Particularly if you're just kind of chill. I'll still add just a little gray marker to kind of spice things up, reinforce some depth. Maybe this one's actually flying, you know. It's a little bit of exhaust action. Um, 
So you guys asked about artists that inspire me. Um, growing up, I used to not read a lot of comic books, but I used to sneak my brother's comic books out. And I just loved how they would like show certain things. It just felt so cool. Um, Kutman is asking, can you follow your passion in illustration designing after 32? You know, I'm not going to deny that there is ageism when it comes to the world. <laughs> there really is. Um, but I will say if you're good, you're good. And if you can just show that you can do good stuff, there are people that will hire you. You can follow your dream. Anything's possible. It's probably a little bit more difficult, but don't, uh, don't discount yourself. Hard work. I saw a quote from Kobe Bryant yesterday. I think uh, my friend Hector had shared it on his story. I would look it up right now, but my phone is streaming at the moment. But something along the lines, you know, of, hey, I was born a talent, but I worked as if I didn't, you know? So even if you have a skill, aptitude, whatever, um, you know, hard work is gonna be a big part of where you go. So, Just know that you can push yourself. You can work hard. There are days when I don't work as hard as I should, honestly. I think we all have those those days, but um, that's also okay. But yeah, follow your dream. One of my favorite things is when someone tells me I can't do something. <laughs> that like fires me up. I'm like, okay. Now I get to prove you wrong. So just a heads up, next week I'm going to be, man, it's going to be a busy couple months actually, two months, um, but next week I'm going to be on Adobe Live, still trying to decide what topic. I might do something social media related like how to use uh, Photoshop to make an Instagram carousel, I might do something about Instagram stories as well. We'll see. Just using their products to boost your presence. I thought about doing some life, life drawing, I guess live life drawing as well. But we'll see. All right, so these feel a lot better than the one I did yesterday. This is the one I did yesterday. Um, just felt a little too kind of static. Yeah, take a leap of faith if if that's what you want to do. But just make sure you work your ass off and work really hard. Um, I think design is just super competitive. There are a lot of people doing it. You got Roshan out there scaring us all. How to place a potted plant next to a paper sketch. You got people like Roshan out there. I know it's scary. He's scary because he's like super talented, but you know, don't let him scare you too much. So just another tip for you. Um, I'm not going to do it here, but cause it's hard to show. Um, when you, when you sketch, if you sketch big and then you shrink your sketch by 20%, 10, 20%. It actually makes your sketch look way better. <laughs> so if you get in the habit of drawing big, you can actually uh, have your work look better automatically. Yes, Mayfrog, life is too short. Make it happen. Follow your dreams, people. I've lost a few friends this year. I'm getting to that age where maybe it's not even age so much as 
life happens, but I've lost a few people this year. It feels so weird, let me tell you. It feels so weird, but if anything, it's also motivated me to make the most of life every day, every minute, every second. So follow your dreams. Follow your heart. Don't live your life for someone else. Live it for yourself. It doesn't mean be selfish. I think uh, it's important to be be a good citizen of the earth. Again, not getting political. There's no freakouts now. But uh, I do believe in being a decent human. Instagram just crashed on me. So hold on. I got to relaunch this freaking app. It's probably trying to steal my data and then restart it. Okay. So there we've got these plans. If I want to, just as a little contextual thing or background, maybe add just a little blue outline here. Here and there. Not that they're all flying in the same space, but you know. So I'm about a day behind uploading to the Patreon folder, but I am gonna scan these, dump them onto, I'll dump them onto the Patreon folder and you guys can download the high resolution version of these if you want or not. Totally cool. But that's available to Patreon, so patreon.com slash sketchaday if you're interested. And then I'll be uploading another guide as well. Alright, so Tom had asked about reflective surfaces, so let's talk about basic reflectivity first, and then we'll go curved, and then we'll go organic and see what happened. Alright. Is 28 late enough to pursue design masters in the United States? Um, so I graduated. I graduated from college when I was 26, almost. No, wait. I got married at 26. Um, I graduated at 24, I think, something like that. For some people. That's late, but I don't think it's too late. I don't think it's too late at all. All right, so quick examples here. So if this is the ground, right? These are the same right here, these two. I should probably record this, <clears throat> this portion anyways, since it's more of a demo. <coughs> Stephania, <coughs> pardon me, pinning, <laughs> pinning this message here in the chat. Um, this is a link to all my materials, okay? 21 and getting her master's already, that's crazy. Good for her. Got a lot of life to live. All right, so if light is traveling and hits the ground here, it's a little bit of math and physics for you. What happens is there's this angle of incidence, I, and what happens is the light reflects typically right back at another angle, R. So I is always equal to R, okay? In other words, if I have like a, if I have light hitting this and this surface is, you know, red, I'm gonna have some red because that light's gonna all of a sudden be projecting the red up up onto this surface okay now as far as the reflection of what you see like if I'm looking at looking at the wall in this direction I would see my eye reflected back this way okay if the wall is angled now if I'm looking this way I'm actually gonna start seeing things on the ground so you kinda have to think about the position of the plane or surface calves there is a discord did I not post it in the video info? Here, I'll share <laughs> the Discord because I do have a Discord. Uh, 
let's see. Okay, boom. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure it's in the description, but there's a Discord as well. It's growing. It's getting a little better. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that you guys can help each other on the Discord more so than me always answering stuff, but um, Tom's always there. He's great. Latrice is there. I know Svetlana is there. Um, there's even a, uh, a badge for patrons and a private channel for patrons, so if you need to ask me something, you can reach me there as well. Um, share pictures, whatever, okay? All right, so with a curved surface now, what's gonna happen? So again, if I'm looking at looking at this curved surface and light is hitting the ground, okay? Reflecting up, okay? At a certain point, you know, this light's gonna pass this edge, okay? Also, what's interesting is, let's say there's something like a cloud in the sky. This is gonna be a very messy drawing, but there's something like a cloud in the sky, okay? It's gonna reflect back Depending on the surface normal here, which is where it gets a little complex, but think of it as if it's facing up, it's going to reflect sky. If it's facing down, it's going to reflect ground. In addition to that, and I don't have a shiny piece of uh, <clears throat> paper here, so I can't, I can't uh, show you this in real time, but what happens, okay, so let's say there's some mountains here. And I'll try and draw the same thing and the sun and maybe some sort of river or something, right? You've got a little scene here and that's what's actually out here in the distance. You've got the mountains, you've got your river, whatever. That's being reflected back as I'm looking into... It's a weird eye. As I'm looking into this plane, okay? So now when it's curved, right, and I'm looking at this, what's actually going to happen is the sun is going to move up a bit Okay, because this, this surface is bending away, it's also going to be a little compressed. And then the mountains as well are going to start to, let's see, I should draw this similar. The mountains are going to get compressed like that. The river would get compressed as well. Okay, so there's a compression that happens right there. All right. So let's say um, <clears throat> you have another surface. Uh, let me think of this one. All right, let's say you have something like this, curve, and then another curve. And these curves are meeting up. Now we have some crazy complex surface, but I wanna show that same mountain scene, road, all that stuff, right, in this surface. So I've got to kind of think about the position of these of these things. All right, so the mountains you're gonna have coming up like that, but when we get to this point, I should zoom in a little bit for you guys on the YouTube. Oh, I'll have to check out his Discord, uh, Cavs. Maybe, well, I guess you can't share a link, but share a link in the Discord if you join. All right, so I have my mountains here. Tom, is this helpful, I hope? We'll do marker in just a sec. So here I have to think, okay, what's actually gonna happen? All right, because this surface is curving down and this one's going down like this. So what actually happens is you get a little bit of a drop. Okay, you're still gonna get some of that reflection happening, but you're also gonna get, right? You're also gonna get the mountains here and because it's down, they're going to kind of be compressed down and then be pulled up. All right, so there's a little break that's going to happen there. And perhaps, I'm trying to think if you'd see the sun still. You might see the sun here. It might just be that the sun is up here. You know, if this surface were to continue, like if this, if this were actually continuing, but you might get like some bright spot, <clears throat> okay, rolling down. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, and if something else is on the go, I guess we had that river, so you'd still see see that river kind of compressed and moving up. All right. Now the other thing is, you're, I, I don't know if this is what you're thinking of like a car body panel or side, but you could have something like a car body panel. Typically looks like this. So here I like to think of sky, sky, horizon, and then ground. 
if I'm going to be shading, shading through all this. Okay, so here I'm going to have horizon stuff, right, sky, I'm going to have sky, and then I'm going to have ground stuff. And this is just with pen, we can do that with marker. And then when we have those surfaces intersecting, things like um, wheel panels, wheel flares, then you've got to think about, okay, how does this horizon now kind of wrap down and continue, and then Maybe this is where our wheel is or whatever. All right. So let's do some marker stuff and see see how that translates a little bit. Um, I'll start with a sphere. OK. And then I'm going to change that sphere to um, a spheroid, something like that. OK. Let me just grab, hmm. I want to use my cheap markers. Not because I don't love you guys, but <clears throat> gotta save the markers, you feel me? I'll use this this blue series because I know they work. Alright. So something like a sphere, I'll start with shading the outside and I'm, I'm trying to think of a light source typically I'll just do top top right create a spot for that highlight we're gonna blend up to it depending on how shiny this is um, sometimes you'll have banding in your shading but basically I'm just gonna shade this using C's All right if you understand how to draw and shade a cylinder this will make sense if not check out my video on how to shade a cylinder. I'll pull that link up for you real quick. Post that in the chat. Let's see here. I've got plenty of videos on cylinders, so. All right. So here's one about a cylinder that you can check out later. All right. <clears throat> so kind of start with that lighter, lightest tone. The reason I'm not shading to the edge, Tom, is if this thing is sitting on the ground, it's going to let and light in the environment is going to hit the ground and reflect up. So you're going to get reflected light on the perimeter of, of the sphere. And this applies to digital sketching as well as marker. I'm just using a marker here. Okay, so start with my light value and then digitally, I mean, you could use an airbrush for this portion as well. So now I'm just gonna build up this shadow core and then also create a blend with the markers. I am using a mark, I, mean, I am using marker paper, sorry, um, to do this. Try and get this blend in. All right, so a little shadow core there, and then if we want to punch it even more, just come in with our third value. Now, if, if there's things in the environment, you're gonna see them kind of in this, this little periphery here um, of this sphere, and that's what you're gonna get. Okay, it's not the best blend, but hopefully you understand at least the breakup. So we have highlight, and then you've got your mids and then shadow core. All right. Um, even something like this applies to drawing the human face, body, robots, whatever, um, stuff like that. Um, check out my link, Kilo Crow. That's where I post, uh, I think I, I pinned it to the top, but check that out. That's where I have information on materials I use. So if you are curious about that. Um, and then once the marker is dry here, I can build up a little bit more as well. All right, where was I? 203. Let's go ahead and ease that blend a little bit. It's gonna keep me up at night if I don't do it right. All right, so something like that. So we've got highlight, mid-tone, shadow core, right? And then if you want, you can throw in a shadow on something like this. 
Okay. So basic, simple thing here. Now, let's say the light is coming from this direction and we have a shape like this. You kind of want to think about the cross section of the shape. So if I were to cut this in two directions, I'll have something like that, which means here on the top, I'm going to have kind of a highlight area like that. And then wrapping up, I'll have my shadow core away from the light. And I'll shade this in with my pen. So even if you're using a pen, this is one way to show reflections and highlights. You can just outline the area and shade them in, right? We're just peeling away some of the information that's on the page or in the, the visual rather, stripping some of that away. Now, if we're gonna do that with marker, right, again, I like to kind of just outline the highlight area and the rest of the shape, and then I can just shade in. I do wanna show you one thing here. So let's say, let's say Tom decided to come visit my little bean here, my little shape, and he's standing right here, right? This is Tom. Tom's gonna reflect into my bean. Okay, Tom's gonna reflect into my bean. What's up, Mecha Art? Thanks for joining. I'll go ahead and get my little shadow core area here. This isn't exactly accurate either, but symbolically representative of what I'm trying to do. All right, work on that blend. This is a Bianyo marker paper, I believe, by the way. All right, so Tom's here. Um, just for purposes of simplicity, I'm gonna make Tom blue. All right, so Tom's gonna reflect into my <laughs> sad boy energy real high. Tom's gonna reflect in here. Um, he's also gonna be compressed and, and stretched out a bit. So I might have something like, like this kind of happening on the edge, okay? So that's Tom kind of reflecting. Now, it's a, it's a symbolic representation of what's happening because I can actually calculate and figure out exactly based on my point of view and orientation. Um, in other words, if this is the egg and this is Tom, this is the top view, right? So Tom's standing here. That's his head, by the way feet and I'm looking in this direction I can actually calculate um, you know how tall up the cylinder he's gonna be but I'm actually just I <laughs> turned Tom into a Smurf yes um, I mean I could I could make it black as well if I wanted to actually looks looks better a little bit of black and blue um, but that's gonna be Tom right there you know even things like the shadow will reflect back into the shape So you'll want to be mindful of that, depending on how I really want to get it. Okay, so there's our, our spheroid. I'm just going to add a little gray to this, actually. Bear with me, I just want to find a gray that I can use. So yeah, if my shadow here is this gray, then I'll have a little bit of that reflecting up into this thing as well. All right, so something like that. I'm just adding a black line for clarity right there, by the way. Okay, so hopefully that helps. What's up, Luca? Nick Trod was asking or saying, I hope everything was okay with the fire. Yeah, the, the family lost, um, they lost their pets, but they survived. So that's a good thing. 
All right, so two different ways to do that that egg thing, all right? So let's do something even more organic. Yeah, get proper marker paper. So this is, and you can find out again on my website a bit about marker paper, but this is Bianyo marker paper. It's really cheap, but it's actually really good. Not as good as the uh, Kansan marker paper that I use, but it is pretty good. So, all right. Okay, last demo for, for Tom, unless you have something specific you wanna see, Tom. But again, I, okay, let me, let me do a body panel side because I, I assume that's kind of kind of what you're you're after. All right, so we'll do something like this, some sort of surface a section of a vehicle. Something you would commonly see. All right. So if I were shading this, again, I have to think about what's actually happening, okay? So I gotta think about what's happening. I'm gonna steal some tracing paper here so we can analyze this. And then I'll do one more sketch and we'll call it today. Thank you so much for hanging, you guys are the best. Much love to you and yours. Anatomy day. Yeah, 2020 is, <laughs> this is the craziest year I've experienced in my entire life, seriously. I mean, where I live, there was an earthquake, fire, we have COVID happening, we've got murder hornets, like what is happening? All right, so here's cross section there. And then, in this section, I've got to decide what, what's actually happening, right? The wheel arch is kind of like this. Okay. And here, actually, this would probably, I'm guessing, flare out a little bit like that. This is going to have a little bit of curve to it. And as pronounced as this is here, it's going to kind of flatten out as we get into this, this area. All right, and remember I talked about the orientation of surfaces and what that's gonna re uh, reflect. Okay, so I still think about it toward the top sky. I'm gonna have horizon, which doesn't mean that you necessarily have to do mountains or anything, but just whatever in the scene would be in the middle, okay? Um, we're gonna have sky again and then ground. Here we're gonna have sky to ground okay because this is curved right you're gonna get sky there's my, my clouds and Sun but then depending on depending on your orientation you're gonna get ground or at least portion of it or um, what tends to happen with the sky anyways I should show you guys this so if you look up into the sky what's gonna happen is you're gonna get deep blue and then that blue, blue, bluish, purple, whatever, is going to transition to a lighter blue as you move down. Okay, and I'm missing my mid value, am I? No, that was my mid value. I'll just use this one to blend. All right, so you're going to get kind of a, a gradient happening with the sky. So as I'm shading this, I'm going to get light or... Um, I'm gonna get some blues, bluish tones, and then that's gonna get lighter going down. All right. Oh, sorry guys, I will zoom out just a little bit. There we go. All right, so just a quick analysis of how you plan this out. All right, so just to make it a little bit more challenging, how about we do, um, we do a different color. I can do red. I think I can do red. Yeah, I should be able to do red. All right, so I'm gonna start with this red 107. And just by habit, I like to outline where I'm gonna apply my marker. All right, something like that. 
Now, like I said, ground, you can kind of interpret ground as warm tones. That's another way to think about it. And um, sky as cool tones. So the horizon, I'm just going to start there. And then I'm going to start shading up into the wheel well. All right, just kind of fan it out. Since this is like really facing upward, I'm going to leave that blank. And then now shade in this bottom. Even leaving a little white spot there just because we may have some sort of reflection happening on the ground that's going to affect the light there. All right. That section looks like a VW Beetle, probably. I could see that. All right, is this my lightest? Yeah, this is my lightest. Okay. So this is my lightest tone. Um, this is where it gets a little tricky though, just because it's so hard. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use my airbrush here, but it is kind of hard to get these tones with just the marker. So up here, as we go from sky to horizon, I might do something like this. Okay, just a little, little airbrushing up top. I haven't masked this off, so it's going to look messy, but we can clean that up with... So right when I get to the horizon, I'm trying to leave that a little whiter or lighter. Okay, and then here toward the top, again... Having the white spot there is going to help with the contrast as well. All right. <clears throat> so yeah, I'll clean this up with a black marker. It should be fine. But normally I would mask it off. Um, okay, so now on the horizon, Tom says he's never seen this before. You've never seen the, the air marker. All right, so toward the horizon, I mean, you can make it jagged if you want on the edge there. And then we're going to have kind of these lines that I got to be real careful here. Just these reflection lines in that corner going up. Um, if I have a flat section on my wheel well, I can just shade that in. I'm going to cheat. And then here on the ground now, right next to the white, I'm just going to up up my contrast a bit, just right in there. Um, if you want to even add a little bluish or purple to that top, we can as well. Um, I'll go ahead and shade in a bit more on the side. Yeah, there we go. That looks pretty good. So now switch back to my mid marker here, and I'll just continue with that gradient. Now, if, if there's something on the ground, again, it's going to reflect into the surface depending on the curvature of this surface. So you might have um, some white lines or we can go to our darkest marker now, this really, really deep red and start to just start to add some of these extra things that might be reflecting into that surface, okay? You can even come back in with like a white, um, white pen, which maybe I'll still do um, and, and do some stuff here, but I'm gonna use my big fat marker, the BFM in a minute here just to, to clean this up, okay? Um, let's see. I mean, I could make this red a little bit more intense. If I have something that's purplish red, because I don't want to go full purple or pink, really. Hold on just a second, humans.
Oh, this is the story of my life. Whenever I want to find something, it's like missing. And then after the stream, I'll be like, oh, there you are. Hi. Welcome back to my life. All right, let's try this Copic. I'm going to cry as I do this, but. Okay, so we got a little, little purple we can hit the top with. You can also do this with, um, what do you call it, uh, pastels. <laughs> you can also do this with pastels. All right, so let's get the BFM here, the big fat marker. Like I was saying, we can kind of clean this up since it's just a vignette. All right, so now we have something like that. And I can take this little this little Posca marker now. And if there's, you know, some little light spots that need to be captured in here in our reflective areas, it might be on the edges. So yeah, <clears throat> that is how I would do it. All right. Okay. Does that answer your question, Tom? <laughs> but hopefully you can see, <coughs> pardon me. I, where did that initial paper go? I'll scan all these in for you, Tom, as well. They'll be on the Patreon page. Um, but we had to start here. We had to start with the flat surface, understand what's happening, curve. And then we go to somewhat organic, okay. We did our egg shapes. And there we have our little body panel. So it's a pretty good practice if you want to try that. Um, you can check that out, all right. Tom is one of our patrons, Kilo Crow. All right, okay, one last sketch. Let's do one last thing. Um, let's see, so I did these ships and maybe I can do like a some sort of bunker sci-fi bunker since I missed Sunday and yesterday my neighborhood was on fire thank you Antibus once again if it's your first time hit subscribe <laughs> yes repping the BFM this is the big fat marker boom I actually love this marker I'm gonna get some more <clears throat> but once again, if you're just joining, this is what we just did. Um, gave the whole explanation of how and why, where this comes from. So um, give it a try. Practice it. I'll cut this segment out of the live and save it as an actual demo and republish that, okay? So you guys can find that fairly easily. All right. Um, I just want to do some, just some quick sci-fi bunker type thing. So... Let's go ahead and just keep it loose. So, um, is it Ian McHugh? Yeah, Ian McHugh has this very like loose style that I love when it comes to his his sketches. Pretty awesome. Check him out. I'm not saying I'm Ian McHugh, but I'm just trying to like keep my my drawing here super loose or looser than perhaps I usually do. I don't want it to look like when I do these houses though, so I gotta be careful. Gotta be careful. All right, I was imagining these were like Little things that jut out. And I'm 
I'm gonna have to cheat. You guys know I cheated now. Alright, maybe some sort of buttress here on the side. Communications array, perhaps. They just installed some COVID towers, COVIDing towers in my my neighborhood. I'm just I'm just kidding, by the way. Towers do not cause COVID. At least I'm pretty sure. Pretty shawl. Cheating on my geometry a little bit. my perspective here okay so now yeah it's like above and below horizon line yeah okay I'm good now I don't need you people like saying your perspectives off just kidding just kidding did we lose Roshan was he bored he's like peace out you keep messing with me happening what's happening all right thanks for hanging guys on this Tuesday I got stuff to do today lots to do as always it seems some some cabling out to this this beacon out here I've got some other mountain fortress or structure off in the distance wouldn't be sci-fi if you didn't have you know a couple celestial objects maybe two how it works oh I should say I don't know if I mentioned this last time but I, I finished Umbrella Academy season 2 so good so so good such a good show and like just as you're watching it and you wonder okay where are they gonna take it from here Interesting tidbit that I discovered is that the uh, creator or the writer <clears throat> of the show, yeah, I've met some conspiracy theorists too, for sure. Casually unsubscribes just to resubscribe. <laughs> Love it. What was I saying? Oh, Umbrella Academy. Yeah, so good. So if you guys haven't watched it, definitely check that out. I loved it. Oh, there's another illustrator on Instagram. I've never met him in real life, but I, I totally fanboyed and like reached out 
he responded, um, Saint Chase is the handle. I'll, uh, I'll post a link there. He was doing a series on classic X-Men that was pretty dope. Yeah, check this dude out. So, so good. <laughs> I'm like, I want to be this good one day. I have not seen the boys yet. Is it pretty good? I have not seen the boys, but one of my classmates from college worked on the show. I probably should watch it since he worked on it. I just don't like leaving Netflix. And it's on Amazon, right? Yeah, I just don't like leaving Netflix, so I try to or rather tend to maybe these are steps. I tend to just leading up to this bunker temple thing. I tend to just stay in Netflix if I if I can. Maybe there's another one of these things off in the distance. So yeah, check out uh, St. Chase, pretty good, or I think his name is Chase, actually. Um, but yeah, one day I was just like, I love your stuff, you're so awesome. And he reached out. So that was fun. It's fun when you, uh, you like, totally fanboy or fangirl or fan human someone. And then you reach out and they respond, and you're like, oh, you're actually cool. You responded because some people like I said you meet them and you're just like what you're not very nice I will say if you ever meet me in real life I am introverted and a bit shy <laughs> or I can be some people are surprised by that but Don't let that sway you. And I don't know, maybe these people are introverted and shy. I did meet Scott Robertson though, he was awesome. Like actually listened. Um, you know, and that was a really cool experience because I remember being in school when his website Draw Through was like my go-to resource. my go-to resource for how to draw and learning stuff or even just being being inspired really um, I should say Feng Zhu was also a, a big inspiration I don't follow him currently and I don't know what he's been up to I really don't but I trust he's well whatever he's up to I'm gonna buttress out just a little bit more here and then I'll add the marker just a little bit of some warm gray you can also do this by starting with the marker Sometimes I like to just do the the ink first and then I get to decide where I want the marker. I suppose you could work in tandem too. You could work back and forth. You, 
could work back and forth between uh, marker and and pen until you're at a place that works for you. Yeah, I think Roshan's gone, but it's all good. Uh, my personality has changed over the years. Yeah, I've changed over the years too. I can be extroverted if I need to be. And by extroverted, I don't mean necessarily not shy. Just that when I spend a lot of time with people, it's draining. In like, if I go to a party or if I am doing an event, it takes me time after the event to just recharge and reset a bit and be okay. So that's what I mean. For some people, those things are supremely energizing. It's not the case with me. This marker is a little too juicy for this, but... Just a little too juicy. All right, so just a quick little sci-fi bunker scene here. Those are always fun. Maybe a little little ship passing by, just whizzing by. All right. I mean, I could keep working on this, adding some line weight, texture, or whatever, but I'm not trying to win an award here. <laughs> just, trying to <laughs> just trying to hang out and share a little bit with you. So thank you guys for hanging out today. I will be back tomorrow. Tomorrow's Wednesday. Yeah, I'll be back tomorrow. Um, I actually have to do some planning for some video content I need to do. Um, I will, like I said, cut out this segment for you. Publish that. It's been a minute since I've done pre-recorded anything anyways. So I decided to switch to live because it was nice to interact. Um, just based on feedback and how many people were watching and whatever, I felt like it was the better thing to do. But if you do have specifics that you'd like to see, you know, like Tom's question he had, um, particularly if you're a patron, happy to kind of answer those questions and help you out. So I appreciate it. Much love. Happy Tuesday. Thank you, Roshan. What video game is this? I don't know. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just having fun. So I just on a, a quick side note and then I'll wrap up. Um, so I have a PS4. My kids play it. I haven't really played it in a long time, but this summer I was like, okay, while my kids are gone, I'm totally going to break out. I don't know. I think I have Grand Theft Auto and Last of Us that I have. I bought those games and I haven't even touched them. So I was like, "All right, this is it. I've got some time." But you know what? I did not touch those games the entire summer. I was working on creative projects or hanging out with you guys online or traveling or whatever. I think my days of video games are pretty much over. I just don't have the time for them. <laughs> so yeah, I just don't have time. All right. Thanks humans for joining, hanging out. Thank you Instagrammers for hanging as well. Um, just again in the future, if you want to participate, youtube.com slash sketchaday.com. Um, quick recap, we started out with some spaceships earlier did those did the bunker and we took Tom's suggestion question turned it into a full demo 
of reflections, lighting, okay, some shading, and then finally with this car panel incorporating all of those things, okay? All right, the ghost of Tsukushima. Sukush <laughs> maybe, maybe, I just have to actually find the time. I just, I don't know that, that I can. All right, couple housekeeping things. I love you all, first of all. If you're interested in any sketches, hit me up. I'm happy to talk about making a transaction with you. But for patrons, these will all be available on the Patreon folder. I'm literally going to just go scan them right now, upload them. So you guys take care. Have a wonderful day. Oops. Wrong. Ah, what's happening? I messed up my controller here. Sorry. Sorry. Okay, there we go. Woo, we're back. Um, <laughs> so thank you for joining. Um, appreciate the support by being here, but also special thanks to the patrons, people who have donated in the past, contributed. Much love to you. If you're curious about tutoring, that's on my website, sketchaday.com. Just click the link that says tutoring. Um, if you want to find out about the stuff I use, sketchaday.com slash stuff. It's pretty simple. I saw a few questions about pens and whatnot. Um, so that's where you want to go to find that all out. All right. Thank you. I will see you guys tomorrow. Peace and love to you. Take care.